nucleophilic addition reaction to produce the first molecule of that node, which we call the geranal pyrophosphate. So this is a schematic diagram of the mevalonic acid pathway. So let's look at the structures. So here we have the step goes. This is a mevalonic acid pathway. This is an acetyl coenzyme A, the first molecule. And another acetyl coenzyme A, the second molecule. These two molecules undergo a cleansing condensation reaction. Cleansing condensation reaction to produce what you call an acetyl, acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl, acetyl coenzyme A through a cleansing condensation reaction where there is a break of a carbonyl, a forming back of carbonyl and an expulsion of a coenzyme. The reaction here is a cleansing condensation reaction. We will form a carbonyl at this end. The carbonyl here will react with this one. This bond will break off and forms back. So when it forms back, there is an expulsion of this coenzyme. Then this side will be replaced by this to get the acetyl acetyl coenzyme A. The acetyl acetyl coenzyme A then undergo another condensation reaction. But here it is an aldol condensation reaction. The unit acetyl coenzyme acetyl CoA will form a carbonyl at this end. Then undergo reaction with this ketone portion. To react with this one, just understand that this reaction is a spontaneous reaction. So every reagent, every condition is favored in the body. So the hydrogens, the water, everything required for this reaction to proceed is all in the body. And bear in mind, this reaction too is so catalyzed by enzymes. So this one is an enzyme catalyzed pathway. So here the acetyl CoA will undergo an outdoor condensation reaction to form what we call the hydroximeter glutaral CoA, which in short we call it HMG CoA. When this one reacts with this, we get two coenzymes reacted with this. But because of hydrolysis, one coenzyme portion will be hydrolyzed to form a carboxylate. So the resulting compound is what you call the hydroximeter glutaral CoA. The hydroximeter glutaral CoA then undergo a reduction by a reducing agent which you call NADPH, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. So at this end. Is going to be reduced by this reducing agent to form this compound and this compound is what we call the mevalonic acid as we discussed earlier this is mevalonic acid it is formed from the reduction of hydrosimethyl glutaral coa mevalonic acid now, the mevalonic acid will undergo pyrophosphate, as we said earlier, two phosphate groups. So, the first phosphate will come from the AD, ATP. And the hydroxy N is going to be phosphorylated. So, the first molecule, this one.
is called the mevalonar phosphate. The first phosphorylation will result in mevalonar phosphate. Then the second phosphorylation of the mevalonar phosphate will result in mevalonar pyrophosphate. Two phosphates groups are called pyrophosphate or diphosphate. So from here there is pyrophosphorylation for us to get the mevalonar pyrophosphate. From the mevalonar pyrophosphate, there is a decarboxylation reaction as well as dehydration. So this carboxylate group will go off so that we create a net charge here on this carbon. Then the hydroxy here, the tertiary hydroxy, also go off so that we create a net charge here. Since we have two charges here, these two carbons can then undergo reaction to form a double bond to get this one. And this is what we call the IPP, isopentane alpyrophosphate. Then this isopentanyl pyrophosphate will undergo an isomerization, as I said earlier. There's going to be a change of the double bond from here to here to get DMAPP, dimethyl ethyl pyrophosphate. So these two compounds differ in the position of the double bond. The significance of this reaction is to create a net nucleophile and electrophile entities where the two can undergo addition reaction to proceed with the synthesis of terpenoids. So having two, these two compounds, the IPP, And the DMAPP, sorry, this is the IPP and then the DMAPP. This one will act as a nucleophile. So in the reaction, the IPP is always the nucleophile, whereas the DMAPP act as an electrophile. This one is an electrophilic entity because due to the presence of this electronegative oxygen is created net positive char positive charge on this carbon so this carbon having a net positive charge and this one having localized by electrons can undergo reaction with the expulsion of the pyrophosphate so in this reaction we are going to expel a pyrophosphate and the pyrophosphate is the one on the DMAPP so that we can get a resulting compound containing two molecules of isopentane, of which one comes from the IPP and the other from the DMAPP. When this one reacts with this carbon we are going to create a net vacancy here Net vacancy, a positive charge here. Now, because of the expelled pyrophosphate, this one will act as a base and then abstract a proton on this carbon. So, when it, there's a positive charge here, the expelled pyrophosphate will abstract a proton from this carbon so that these two can undergo reaction to form a double bond. So, in the mevalonar pathway, Sorry, the mevalonic acid pathway. The first terpenoid produced in the course of the reaction is this. And 
this step now is called zero now iophosphate that is the first step node now this step node can also, also undergo another reaction with another molecule of IPP if it undergoes another reaction with another molecule of IPP This carbon will again once again act as a nucleophile and react with this side to increase the length of the chain. Or even this one can undergo reaction. The geronal pyrophosphate can undergo reaction to produce another terpenoid, which we call the geronal. So in reducing, a reducing agent will come and form a hydroxy here in place of the OPP. So when you have OH at this chain, the name becomes geranol. And this geranol is a terpen, a monoterpen. Or oh, this entity can also proceed to undergo another reaction with another IPP to increase another length. The same entity can undergo cyclization to produce a cyclic terpene. So in cyclization, this carbon and this carbon will form a six membered ring. Then you have this one and this one as part of a substituent on the ring. So basically that's how terpenes are synthesized. It's very simple. Through the mevalonic acid pathway, there is condensation of three molecules of acetalco A to produce hydroxymethyl coenzyme A. The hydroxymethyl butyl coenzyme A and go reduction to produce the mevalonic acid. Then mevalonic acid and the group pyrophosphorylation to produce mevalonic pyrophosphate. The mevalonic pyrophosphate and the good decarboxylation and dehydration to result in IPPs. The IPP undergoes isomerization to produce DMAPP. These two entities act as the precursors for the synthesis of terpenes. So in them, the DMVP will act as the electrophile, whereas the IPP will act as the nucleophile. So they react to produce the first step in which you call the geronal pyrophosphate, which can be reduced to, to form the geronal, can undergo cyclization to form a monocyclic terpene like menthol, limonene, terpenol, and the rest. Or this one can also proceed to undergo complex terpenes. So in that order, the chain will increase. This one will react with another molecule of IPP. The IPP will once again act as the nucleophile and react with the positive carbon in it to increase the chain, just like this one. Thanks for watching. Keep subscribing to Nox TV and keep updated. Thank you.